Hi, and welcome to Miss Simp's second ever virtual drop-in workshop. Um, this week we're doing something a bit different. Um, we've decided after the success of the last one, um, not just to limit it to people from Nottingham to do the workshops, um, but from people all over the country and, dare I say it, the world. Um, so just really quick before we get into the workshop, um, what we've decided to do is take the money that we would normally spend renting out a room on a Thursday, the Mort Cross, we love you, um, and we're going to give the money that we'd spend on that room to improvisers to teach workshops. Um, and our first one of these is this week with Keisha and Russ Payne of Tiny Stories and the Same Faces. Um, if you want to teach one of these workshops, please get in touch. All the details will be in the description. Um, equally, if you want to support these workshops, um, please feel free to donate the money that you would normally spend on a proper drop-in to help us like fund these. Um, and also, we've had an already really, really exciting level of demand for people who want to do them. Um, and if we can fund it, we'd like to maybe do more of these a week. I'm really enjoying editing them. It's giving me structure, which is great. Um, finally, before we get into the workshop, um, as last time, make sure that you like clear your valuables out of the way, clear yourself some space, do a quick physical vocal warm up if you feel the need. Um, don't do anything that's outside of your comfort level. Is that everything? Yes, I remembered. Um, if you want to, make sure you pull your curtains or in some way shield your improv if you want to. If you don't, if you want to show your neighbours what you're doing, great, do it, spread the word. So I will now hand you over to Russ and Key. Um, before I do, just one quick warning about this video. It is incredibly wholesome. Like, they're just, I just, I love them. They, there's a cat in it. I just, I love, I just, Key, Russ, adopt me. Now it's on. <laughs> Is this thing on now? That's on now. So we're recording. Oh, good. <laughs> Hi, Emily and uh, other people who might be watching this. Um, the fantastic Emily Brady at Miss Imp has asked us, for some reason, <laughs> to, to do uh, some work. It's quite there to do some exercises around some of our favourite ways of getting into character particularly what's your one <laughs> particularly non-human characters and getting away from being all trapped being a human which is tough these days so um i'm going to be talking about how to be stuff stuff how to be stuff and um, stuff. physical stuff uh you know like non-corporeal stuff how to be how to be a concept um i think that we should have more people being concepts in scenes concept and what are you going to do, Russ? Animals! Russ uh, is going to do animals. So um, I think one of the first things to talk about is uh, where we do improv and who lets us on stage to, to do improv with them. <laughs> uh, do you want to go first? Where we do improv? Yeah. Um, so we do At improv. At the moment we do it in our house. Yeah, just in our house for the cat. Um, we do improv. She's a tough crowd. <laughs> she doesn't even laugh at all. Um, we do improv in Leicester. That's true. Mainly. Yeah, yeah. With the same faces. Yeah. And tiny stories. Mm -hmm. And Keisha's one-offs. I do a solo show, Keisha's one-offs. I think, I think, is that, is that everything? Do we uh, do more things? Yeah, the Midlands Super, Midlands oh, Super, super Group. Mm. The Midlands Improv Soup Her Group, which is a group of female improvisers and non-binary improvisers, are mm. also welcome um, across the Midlands, and we, we get together randomly and do gigs every now and again, which is great fun. I've just started a two-prof team with Adam called Russ and Adam. That's on the Instagram, but we started... You heard it here first! That's new information! We, we started literally before the lockdown, so there has been no rehearsals or shows or anything. Like, I'm not You're even like sure if that's star -crossed lovers what's happening there. You are, you are divided by circumstance. But we do have a Twitter page, so... <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, and one of the things that, so uh, one of the things that I always like being things. I don't, I, I always try I to like find ways animals. to get away from the two people standing at a 45 degree angle to the audience having a chat. Those scenes can be great and hilarious, um, but we've seen a lot of them. So why not change things up a little bit? And, um, and Russ is notorious in Tiny Stories for whenever an animal is mentioned. Yeah, it's basically a race to the stage now, um, Between you which and Carly I Smith, generally win. Our fellow animal buddy. Um, and, 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 you don't always win. She does get there first sometimes. Uh, that doesn't happen, really. 
No, no. Uh, yeah, no, I really enjoy being, 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 as soon as there's a suggestion of there's an animal maybe in this scene, and it's like, I've got to be in there and do the animal thing. Um, so we'll talk <laughs> about that. That's not too different to being stuff, actually. One of the things um, for deciding when to be a non-human character mm. is it's a, it's a classic example of show, don't tell. So if somebody mentions a thing... Oh, I'm just going to boil the kettle, and then suddenly Key's there as a kettle. And maybe, maybe I'm a friendly kettle, or maybe tea is going to be fine, or maybe I'm just one of those kettles who's like, no, it's not ready yet. Bit of a hot head. Stop watching me. Kettle. I ain't boiling nothing whilst you're watching me. Anyway, or something like that. I don't know. Um, this is uh, day whatever of lockdown, so <laughs> might get a little bit extreme. Bit, yeah. Um, what was I, what was I saying? Oh, yes. Show, don't tell. So uh, a big element of what we both really like um, doing that is relevant to both of these ways of... of adding something to a scene or playing with an idea is just if you get the feeling just slightly in your in your feet that you want to step forward you want to be the pigeon or the kettle or the growing sense of unease about global issues um as a character then just do it step forward and do it and uh and commit to it <laughs> commit to the growing sense uh, or the sense of hope Maybe we should all be hope in every scene we do. Um, now we realise that not everyone. So we're we're isolating together. <laughs> <laughs> with the cat, which with means cat. this is like a non-stop two prob up in up in the the Charpane household right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but we we we're going to try and adapt some of the exercises that we're going to talk about in case you're isolating alone. Uh, physically, but yes. if you are alone physically, the improv community is out there. If you want to, if you want to do Zoom sessions or so Skype improv, Zooms. like people will be up for it. And maybe we'll try and make some adaptations to take that on board as well. Sure. Okay. Uh, that's our introduction. Um, I'm Key. This is Russ. Hi. Uh, and here's how to be stuff or animals. Here is an example of a scene where it's just two people talking to each other. Hello, fellow human. Hi, human person. We are too close. Let's stay where we are and talk words at each other. From a distance of two metres. <laughs> Clever words. Ha ha. I am so stuck now because I am thinking of clever words. My body doesn't move. My hands might go here. My eyes might go here. Oh. That's an example of... No, not every... Not every... Not every... I think the, the camera's there. Hello. <laughs> um, so, they're all absolutely fine. Always fine to have two people talking to each other in the scene. And it's natural for us to be people in scenes because that's who we are the rest of the time is with people but the cool thing about improv is that you don't have to be you uh, or even be a people you can be anything you could be uh, animal you could be an animal um you could be this plant uh you could be um what are you being the plant okay um what am i <laughs> it's fine i watched it the other day um, so we're going to do some exercises to, to kind of get you into the habit of, of being stuff. Um, and so one of the first things that, that I like to think about um, when trying to, to break down how do I make a decision to be a thing is uh, how it leads to kind of something visual on stage that's interesting to look at. That is more interesting maybe to look at than two people at 45 degree angle. And I'm afraid we haven't got a really like wide field of view on the video. So... Um, this is my limit. I, I might have to be a bit descriptive. So one exercise that you can do is to just, um, if you've done, maybe do a physical warm up or just get a bit loose and stretch out. Um, and then <laughs> you can walk around. I'm kids there. Please be aware of your space. That's very important when I'm doing anything physical. I meant to do that, to, to just to like remind to people to be aware of the space. Russell, thank you. Be aware of your space. Be aware of your space, Key. I am aware. 
Excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so am I now. Mm. <laughs> Bonus points if you notice me do that again. Oh god. It's gonna happen. Um what was I saying? Oh, be so getting used to being a bit physical. So walking around a space is always a nice thing to do in a workshop. Um you might not have a big space to walk around in, so you can just walk around in your space. Um, please carry on walking around, Russell. Um, and you can walk around as yourself. At the moment, Russ is walking around as himself in his pajamas because it's day four of lockdown. Um, so. Oh, maybe take your slippers off as well. Uh, yes. Yeah. Be careful moving around, just as you would in any There's any space. Um, I think your socks want. are going to be worse for moving around. I don't want to have to take you to A and E when, like, I don't want to turn up in half. I think I feel safer. Do what's best for you. It's, this is a judgment that you're going to have to I make. feel safer without the slippers. I feel safer with the slippers, but there we go. Um, so walking around the space, moving around the space, if there's more than one of you being aware of each other, and then maybe, uh, maybe, let, what we'll do next is we'll try um, walking around the space as a square. Both of us have gone immediately. <laughs> <laughs> for a really a square shape and that square shape is already if you watch Russell it's already kind of given him a bit of a character um, it's he's a, a kind of a Im imposing kind of physical character as a square so let's walk around the space and this time let's be a different shape so perhaps let's be a, uh, let's be um, a star shape and now we've got a character in the thing. It's a little bit star. cheeky star shape. A cheeky cockney star. <laughs> yeah, I've just stick to just shapes. You could do uh, letters. Um, so let's walk around as the, the letter W. Uh, well, um, uh, let's walk around as the letter S. <laughs> oh my god, it's Spanish, that's amazing. So we've already started being stuff, but we're doing it uh, as a warm-up, so it's really low stakes, it doesn't matter, we're not on stage, we're just be being a bit weird and seeing what happens. Um, and that's the first exercise that I'd like you to do. Um, the next couple of things that I would like people to try at home are um, a bit closer to, to improv games. So maybe if you're either in pairs or you can do this by yourself, um, so demonstration in pairs. I'm going to give you an object, Russell, and I mm -hmm. want you to tell me three things that relate to that object. Okay. Uh, okay, so post box. Postman, red, and days of the week. Okay. <laughs> um, give me an object. Mm. Speaker. A speaker. Uh, um, vibrates. Mm -hmm. um, up in the corner of a room. Okay. Uh, has a twin. It's <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right. Um, and you can also do it by yourself. Just think of an object. Uh, think of an object, Russ. Pencil. Give yourself three things about a pencil. Uh, ha a eraser, so you can rub out mistakes. Just the word. Oh, what? Just the word. Eraser. Eraser. Lead. Wood. <laughs> There we go. That's an example of how you could do that on your how own. How to do the exercise and correctly. And you could extend the exercise and give yourself the reasoning. But I'm um, always about, um, you're just going to make that decision about a character really quickly. So you don't need to say why there's an eraser. If the pencil to you means that there's an eraser, that's great. You've got that element of your character there as well. So that's something that you can do. Um, and now a little improv game that short form fans will be very comfortable with. Um, it's uh, strange things for a something to say. Mm. So we're going to think of an object and then we're going to be that object. And this is a bit wordier, but we're trying it. We'll be an object, we'll be physically that object. Um, and then we're going to think of weird things for that object to say. Um, so thinking about the, the physical shape of the object mm. and then what would it be weird for it to say? So I'll be the object. Give me an object. Tin can. Tin can? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, oh, well, I'm in demand at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. Nom, 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 nom. 
Uh, uh, would you like to do it? Should I give you an object? I can try. Okay. Uh, um, oh, umbrella. Strange things for an umbrella to say. Strange? Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Mm, I like being wet. That's not that strange for an umbrella, no, though, because they're but, designed for wetness. No, we <laughs> we both uh, drifted towards uh, actually saying something that we thought that object would say, and yeah. that's the great thing about doing things as a, a, a workshop activity is it doesn't matter that we got it wrong, and also, if we were on stage, it wouldn't matter that we got that wrong, an audience would still find that entertaining. Because short-form audiences love innuendo. <laughs> But also because of the, the commitment and the character that came out of it. Um, so, uh, whilst you are in isolation, um, I think you could also, especially uh, whether you're on your own or whether you're around another person, you could just be some of the things around your house. Um, you know, just look, and also look at objects. And if there are objects that you think look interesting, just be like, how would I be that thing? Um, Russ <laughs> is doing this activity now. He's found a pillow. This is a pink pillow. Yeah. It's got a flower on it. Yep. Are you okay? I'm getting a bit soft. Maybe you should sit on the sofa with your friend. Oh. <laughs> that was lovely. <laughs> um, all of the things I've just done have been very specific to objects, but I think they're applicable to concepts as well. So let's try uh, three things about a concept. Uh, oh. Russ, give me a concept to, and it could be a feeling, it could be, you know, a non-physical thing. A non-physical thing? Yeah. Knowledge. <laughs> um, knowledge is, uh, links to wisdom, um, sensible, and unfortunately not very common. Yeah. Yeah. Knowledge. Uh, I'll give you uh, a concept. Uh -huh. um, uh, uncertainty. Hmm. Links to the unknown. Links to the void. Links to coronavirus. Coronavirus. Um. Okay, and now let's do the strange things for a, to say, which will probably be things that a thing would say. So okay. a non a non physical thing. You, sorry, you want a non physical thing to be, yeah. To be. Hmm. Mm, thoughts. No, nope, can't go to sleep yet. No, nope. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> You're gonna be up till three in the morning, mate. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Hey, hey, hey. Where do you think, huh? Where do you think all the pigeons are gonna go if no one's out there to chase them around? What? Oh my god, if we could all work from home already, what are we doing going into work? Oh, we're all gonna die. Thoughts? <laughs> um, That's an insight into your brain. Would you like to try it? I could try it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, unusual thing, well, things that a thing would say. Um, uh, so not unusual, just anything. Well, aim for unusual, but you'll miss because <laughs> that's how <laughs> this is going. Works. Okay. <laughs> oh, you might succeed. Okay. Than mine is. Um, uh, danger. Unusual things for danger. Unusual, to say. unusual things for danger to say. I feel really safe. <laughs> I feel really cozy. Here's an it's example of Russell doing the activity right. Okay. Rare. <laughs> um, we're going to have a quick pause to check on battery level and we'll be right back with whatever he's doing. Hello. Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm going to talk about animals. Animals! 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 Uh, so, there's... Kind of three things I was thinking about in relation to animals, very simple. Um, you can think of it maybe as a continuum, don't have to. First thing is in a scene, which we alluded to earlier, you can jump in and actually be an animal. Just do it. That's, Just be that's an something animal. you can do. Why are you waiting? Be an animal! Just do it! 
animals. Anyway, uh, that's one thing. Um, and the, the second thing is you can try and be a really like perfect example of that animal. So like a really real version of it. And then the, the final, the, the last of these three things is you could use animals to inspire you as a human character. That's right. Um, so the first one, to, to be an animal and to signify it to an audience, um, we often go to quite simple like things to show that off. So, for example, if y if I if you or I were to be a cat, we all clean our ears. Wow, 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 wow. That's a really clear uh, indicator to an audience that you're suddenly coming and to your scene partner that you're suddenly coming in as a cat. So I think that's quite quite an <laughs> obvious thing. Uh, or a dog, you go. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> this is a really cool thing you can do. <laughs> for, for a <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to bring the object back. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and that can be um, that can be something you can use in a scene, especially in the short form, I or if you're doing it. short, quick scenes. That's come not. Here, come here. Here. I don't know where it is. Come here. Come here. Come on. <laughs> it's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> um, it's something you can use um, in a in a short shorter uh, thing mm. to indicate really quickly that you're being whatever animal it is that you are. Um, mm. Another one is if you were going to come in um, maybe as a dog or something that you could try and be the most dog-like possible. So that was actually a really good example of that because initially we started off with the indicator of woof 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 I'm a dog woof 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 um, and then it led on to we were playing ball and then Key was just playing as a dog like she was jumping up on me and that kind of thing which isn't really like a clear indicator of dog in the way that uh, woof 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 I'm a dog woof 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 kind of thing is it's more like you're being the animal okay so I've got some exercises let's do some exercises exercise number one will be coming up in a second wait for it Okay, so one exercise that you can do at home is to think of a random animal or use an internet generator to find you a random animal to be. For example, a monkey. And then you can enter rooms as a monkey. <sighs> okay. Day three of isolation. Monkeys. So exercise one is to run around the house. Run around like the house animal. like an idiot. Be careful. Do, but you could. You don't have to run around if you're a slow animal. Yeah, you could just be like slothing into the room. Oh, yeah, like sloth or like mm. a snail. Snailing into the room. You'd be a snail, and like animal. if you were got a housemate, you could just be like. <laughs> just like climbing up. That's a fun game. <laughs> um, so yeah, any random animal, use an internet generator or just pop ideas. The, the get people to text you animal names and yeah. see those around your house. Any, any, next time you get a, a meme or a photo from a friend of any animal, be that animal for them a few minutes. That's always fun. Fun game. Um, the next thing you can do to add on to this to make that animal more interesting, less of a caricature and more of like a character that a it character. happens to be an animal, like creature comforts. Um, is to add on maybe an emotion to that. Okay. So you could have random animal, random emotion, and add those two things together. For example, Key, if you were a whimsical frog, how would that play out? Well, what? Ooh, tastes like dreams. <laughs> Excellent. So that's an example of that. You can definitely do that any time I would have been the more day. physical, but we haven't got the field of view. Yeah, I would have been down here. We can't go down to be proper frogs. Can't be We're frogs. Like yeah, that. but you if, you, if you're physically capable, be a frog. Be a frog. Um, yeah, so that's the second exercise. That's exercise number two. Um, and the, the final exercise... Um, well, can we do another example of exercise number two? I could do an, another example yeah, of exercise number two. If I give you an animal an emotion. Yeah, go on then. Uh, a um, 
<laughs> a decisive badger. That's my set. I'm gonna burrow. Uh, off camera, Russell now burrows into the fireplace. I'm ready for that car! It's so safe for in the home. It really depends on who you're improvising with. <laughs> uh, I would just add that this is an extension you could do to objects. Uh, you could be Absolutely. a thing with an emotion. So um, earlier I was a tin can um, and that gave me a character, but I could be a tin can with an emotion. Um, like, a, I don't know, what emotion could I have as a tin can? Um, your tin can is wistful for its youth. I remember the days when I wasn't even past my sell-by date. <laughs> now my use-by date's gone as well. Oh. You have some baked beans on toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, right, yes, so that's two so that's exercises. Two. The, the third and final exercise is what I, what I was saying about like you can use a, an animal to inspire your character. Um, so you can do the same thing like with the monkey um, or with any animal of walking into a room just as that animal. So, for example, I thought maybe I'd decide that every time I walk into our home office or into the bedroom that I would decide to be a, a, a character inspired by a specific animal. Um, here's an example. Give me an animal. Uh, okay, um, an owl. Ooh, hello. You're looking good today, here. Thank you. And doing some hard work. Oop, oop, oop. That's right. Excellent. I've got to, got to keep doing that work from home. With me. <laughs> so yeah, like, like any animal can inspire a character. That was quite an extreme. That was more like a, a two and a half rather than a three on the on the scale of being. Can I be an animal? Yeah, you can definitely be an animal. Okay, I'm uh, gonna walk in as an animal. So I I think a good example is like a bird like older lady, that kind of thing. Okay. It's a good example of like a human who has characteristics like an like an animal. Okay. So bird like would be really cool. Well, bird see. bird like. Yeah. <laughs> you at this point Russell Payne expects me to come in like a dainty little bird like older lady. But when he says bird like to me, what I want to do is it's gonna be an albatross. <laughs> <laughs> Yet another example <laughs> of Keyshawn not doing the exercise right. I don't do exercises right. I do shows right. I do shows right. <laughs> That's like the worst improv. <laughs> so imagine that, yes, I am that improviser who says, like, uh, get it wrong in the workshop to get it right in the show. Ugh. No, just do stuff. So that's the, fine. So that's, that's all, the, all the exercises. But we have bonus content. <laughs> Don't go! Don't leave us! Don't leave us. Honest to God, we, <laughs> we're on... Uh, we started self-imposed lockdown at, before the weekend, so, you know... Before life began. No, that's not true. Um, so, <laughs> so here, uh, we're just going to have some nice examples for you of um, wandering around the house being an animal. Bonus or content. Being uh, uh, walking around as a shape. Um, uh, or being a thing. Um, okay, let, let's, let's see that, shall we? Show don't tell. Show don't tell. Psst. Psst. You want any letters? Got some letters? Yeah. Got some spinach too. Yeah. What? Hey! No, don't touch that, it's been there a while. See you again. About 15 minutes? Yep. <laughs> Bonus content. There's three of us isolating in this three household. Three improvisers in the house. And one of them is really, really good at being an animal. Oh, she's so good at being a cat. Yeah. Yeah. She's really She's good at that down. down. Yeah. Skills. Bye! Bye! Uh, thank you for indulging us in thank you um, in talking about improv 
uh, and doing a virtual workshop. Uh, a couple of things that I think we should mention. Um, you can find out about the same faces, tiny stories, Midland Soup Her Group, all on social media. If you want to know about Keisha's one-offs, then you should speak to me. Um, Russ and Adam are already on social media, although they've not had any <laughs> in-person rehearsals. Nope. Um, same faces do workshops, Tuesday nights, there's a group in Northampton, um, but now you can join them from anywhere. I think they're starting to do Zoom uh, group with the fantastic Jen Kenny. Um, possibly the Leicester group might come on to Zoom at some point. I think Thursday. Yeah, yeah Thursday nights. Uh, so you could be virtually in Leicester, who wouldn't want that? Um, and fantastic stuff all going on all the time online. And the improv community seems to be really just kind of running with it. Um, I'd like to say huge thanks to Emily and Miss Imp for uh, allowing us to just talk nonsense for a little bit while I kind of keep ourselves entertained for a bit. Um, and I thought we would end with just a bunch of suggestions of things you might like to try being or animals you might want to try being. So we're going to take it in turns. Russ. Uh, would you like to say animals and I'll say things, or do you want to okay. just say whatever? Just say anything. Kangaroo. Okay. Uh, donut. Aardvark. Uh, why am I only thinking of food? Uh, banana. Philosophy. Ennui. Tiger. Be a tiger. Pangolin. Snake. Uh, hedgehog. I'm all about curling up I'm in a protective... <laughs> It's all about curling up in a protective little bundle. Um... Oh, um, <laughs> sausage dog. Cat. Octopus. Leopard. Bread bin. Polar bear. Tyrannosaurus rex. Velociraptor. <laughs> I'm watching. Uh, one. I'm seeing if they're doing it. Are they doing it? Are I'm they watching. doing it? Okay, so. try this then, wise guys. Uh, a slipper. On its own. Where's its friend? A lonely slipper. What's happened? Um, oh, uh, a casserole. A happy cash machine. <laughs> For the money. Or, or maybe it's given all its money away. Oh. What a, a great day. An, an altruistic ATM. An altruist. We all need those at the moment. Um, a penguin. Hmm. A fish. Any fish. A, sword, a swordfish. A dolphin. Uh, um, a shark. A, a a plank of wood. <laughs> uh, a sunbeam. The seventh day after Christmas. The first day after lockdown. Oh, um, a, a book, tadpole, a pond, be a pond, be a pond, be a pond, um, a doorstop, a brick, be a brick, um, be a falling brick, brick, Tuesday, two o'clock on a Tuesday. Do you know what I like about something like a suggestion like two o'clock on a Tuesday mm. is there isn't really a way to get it right. So there's no way to get it wrong. That's true. It's also like quite context dependent. Like it, it depends on the people. Like what, what the, like some people might be doing a specific thing on a two o'clock on a Tuesday. But most people are just like, oh God, too much. Yeah. Everything. It's not even Wednesday. Uh, yeah. But that time, if you're being that time, you might be like... Sorry, it's not Wednesday, you know. They'll be here in a minute, but it's stuck with me for the moment. Um, or something like that. Um, Chameleon. <laughs> uh, sunglasses. The sun. The dawn of time. The end of the universe. I would love to walk into a scene as the end of the universe. Isn't that just like a massive like wipe edit? It's like that's all gone. Oh, maybe we're always the end of the universe. Oh my god, wipe edits are the end of the universe. Uh, I just like the idea of just walking in and being like, "Come on, guys, gotta get out." That's it. It's done. Backing it's it up. It. Backing it up. We tried. Look, we really did. But uh, 
you know. It's the end. It's the end. This is the end.